How do you do, everybody? Ladies and gentlemen, and boys and girls, and men and women, and teachers, and mothers, and fathers, and people. I am the professor. I work in this place. And strange things emerge. In the last program, I hinted at a little story about a little creature that lives in Australia and runs on the water without getting his feet wet. Here he is. Right. You have seen them. Now, what do you suppose has happened in an evolutionary way? And Mr. Darwin would be enchanted by this little story. It turns out that this little creature, in earlier years, was pursued by a bigger creature which ran after him and devoured him. So, the marvelous mecha mechanism of preservation of the species came alive and this little creature developed the following mechanism. When he is pursued by a bigger one and is about to be devoured and this one is behind him by some little bit on the quiet pond, he exudes a little liquid which lowers the surface tension of the water behind him and this one is drowned. I think that's absolutely fantastic. That one is drowned. Isn't that something? And now while I'm talking a little about bugs, I want to invite your interest to a story that you can tell to enchant your mates. Let us say that you know what a centimeter is. You do know what a centimeter is. It's a unit of length in the metric system. And I will tell you, if you do not know, that a dyne, D-Y-N-E, is a unit of force in physics. Beginning with that, I ask you to consider the following. If I consider this little creature a centimeter, notice this is a little joke now, you understand. I'm going to call that little creature a centimeter. I want to know what you would call this, and we're all physicists, you understand, in this joke. I want to know what you would call this little creature. Hey, he's lying on the ground there. Answer, a dying centimeter. <laughs> I like that, I like that. So you see, even when men get old like me, they are given to a little jest and fun. A dying centimeter. I hope you're all with me. Next exercise. Of very great consequence for those of you who buy things in food shops, in tin cans and boxes. Here I have a sheet of cloth which happens to be orange and so big. And here I have an identical sheet of cloth, which is the same size, but green. Now, their only difference is color. I propose to make two sacks out of this cloth. One sack like this, with a bottom in it, and I'll show you that in a minute, and the other sack like this, with a bottom in it. And I have made those two sacks. There's the big one. I mean, uh, the big round one with a bottom in it. Let's get a picture of it. And there's the small one. That is the skinny one with a bottom in it. Now I made them out of the same size material. That's the material for both, for each. Question, if I made them out of the same size material, must they not have the same volume? That is, looking at the blackboard again, looking at the blackboard, here I have one, that's like that, and here I have the other, that is like this. Must they not have the same volume? I'll leave that for you to think about, and also to think about this. When you go to the shop to buy food, do you not have cans that are shaped like that? Maybe asparagus tips come in them. Do you not have cans shaped like that in which kippet herring comes? Do you not have cans shaped like that in which canned corn comes and so on? Think about it and we shall report on it next time. And I thank you for watching.